welcome to Creative Block. We're your host, V. And Megan. We interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We ask people on Twitter and Instagram. Follow us on Instagram now because we all know what's going down with Twitter. Um, if they had specific topics, they wanted us to discuss as well as some drawing prompts. Today with us, we have Victor Courtright. Yay! Victor, hi! Victor! Hello! Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. This is going to be so fun. I'm really excited. Yeah! <laughs> so, I man. can't wait. <laughs> should I wait, though? Like, should I start? Like, we're supposed to draw, right? So... <laughs> We could we, we could start drawing. So right I should now. start drawing. Start drawing now. Yes. <laughs> so excited to draw. Uh, Megan and I a circle. <laughs> oh. I first met Victor. Wait, you met Victor before I did, Megan. I met Victor on Thundercats Roar. I've never uh, like, and I saw your art on Tumblr before, and I was like, this guy is crazy. He's amazing. Uh, all your little gifts on Tumblr were like so crazy like so well animated yeah and how did, how did you guys meet uh, we worked together on pickle and peanut and it was it was wonderful because that was my first industry job as a board artist and victor was very helpful and gave me a lot of really helpful advice and guidance <laughs> do you remember I the say? advice you gave megan victor <laughs> Uh, um, I, I just know. remember I if I was like stuck on a sequence. <laughs> if I was stuck on a sequence, you'd be like, "Try this," and I'd be like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> that was a very fun time. It was super collaborative, and like everybody was so creative. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. There's not many times in my life that had like so much, just like. I don't know. I was just surrounded by so much inspiration. Yeah, and you started constantly. You started as a character designer, right? I did. Oh, really? Just, like super, super strange for even me to think about because, like, I th only think about the storyboarding. Like, I like character design a lot, but like, I didn't. I wasn't like living. I I don't know. It was, it was a a half life until I got to that storyboard position. <laughs> I I like that you're talking about a half life. Um, I want to ask you if you went to art school. Did you go? Did you study art? I did study art. Yeah. Well, I went to school for animation in Minneapolis. Uh, I kind of yeah always. I mean, the trajectory was always to get me towards animation, but I didn't really you know understand what it meant to be an animator until I went to school for it and uh it was uh it was great and weird and I learned a whole bunch of stuff and shot some animation on on uh 16 millimeter cameras and uh did some x sheets and learned I hated working in CG and <laughs> all the necessary <laughs> All the all the important things that go into building a, an animation career, um, CG is fine. It's just not for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I went I went to uh, to animation school in Minneapolis at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. That's so that was a good time. Yeah, oh, that's great. Do you feel like um, what what were like your uh, main takeaways from college? Which, like, uh, the main takeaways, I guess, I don't know. I was surrounded by a bunch of people who were very creative and very uh, talented. And I don't know. I think the same is true about uh, the animation industry when you get there for all of you trying to do that. Um, it's all just about uh, the amazing people that you're surrounded with. Like animation is not a... It's not, it can be, but it's not a very good solitary <laughs> yeah. uh, endeavor. Like you, you really need people to make animation uh, in any sort of large capacity. So, just being surrounded with other amazing, talented people and working with them collaboratively, like I think, gave me a good foundation for basically like what the animation industry is all about. So. Yeah, I feel like that's like a theme that we 
hear often this kind of like finding a community to kind of like keep yourself motivated to like draw and like uh you know kind of like keep that drive burning you know um how like when you graduated from college what would you say you had in terms of like looking for your first gig did you have like a portfolio an animated short kind of what what did that look like for you when you graduated uh well i was in minneapolis so there weren't a whole lot of animation opportunities <laughs> there's like a few there are a few studios there and uh uh yeah so i i i didn't know exactly what my options were i got hired at a local animation studio called puny uh and we did like f like websites and flash games and all sorts of nonsense we did uh like a, a little bit of animation for like pilots and and uh uh, a couple movies and things like that but for the most part it was like um yeah pretty like we built a like a loading page for a target website you know mm -hmm. we built we did oh like banner ads for for like cart uh, for like uh cereal companies and stuff like that so <laughs> very exciting uh work um but uh yeah like getting that job i think the requirements in Minneapolis at the time weren't super high. I, I made a film at school mm -hmm. and that was like good enough. <laughs> basically, mm -hmm. It was like, Oh, you can, you can do your job. You can finish a project. That's good. You're hired. Oh, now relearn cool. it. Now relearn everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did, were you like, yeah, I, I was not, it was all in flash and I had never really used, flash before so wait was, uh, what did you make your um your short film with at school all paper pa all it was paper yeah Whoa. what okay. can you believe wow. it i can't believe it i mean it was i also made like a short that i made as like a graduation project with the little team was also like animated on paper and then i was nice. like I'm glad I don't have to do this ever again. <laughs> oh, and and here I've been trying to get back to that the whole time. I know. I feel like, um, by the way, anyone listening, if you haven't checked out Victor's Instagram page, he posts like really amazing little animated traditional pieces. Um, it's super cool because it's like you actually color it in on, on cells, which I've never done. We only animated with like, pencil on paper and then we would scan the pencil and we would color like everything else would be digital right the, the color and even coloring the line art and all that stuff um i think we use tv paint for coloring oh nice did you did you make it in like black and white or was it like did you color traditionally your short uh the the college one yeah the college one I colored digitally. We didn't have Cintiqs in our school, so oh. I I had to use like uh I oh most of it was colored with a mouse. Really? <laughs> and then we had like a couple Wacom tablets, like you know the the old school no screen yeah. version uh, that we could like rent from like our tech center thingy. Um, uh, so when I when they weren't being used, I was using those. But yeah, it was all digital coloring, but everything was, uh, you know, drawn on paper and then scanned. So it was something. <laughs> Quite the procedure. I actually I don't like mixing the process. I don't like stopping halfway in the middle of the process to d like start doing digital coloring i'd rather do everything practical or everything digital oh yeah you like staying in like one medium yeah that makes exactly sense. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> i gotta understand that i also yeah i don't know i feel like the scanning process is just such a like pain in the ass <laughs> it's boring <laughs> yeah. like you have to put yourself in a trance yeah <laughs> 
It's like you just get a giant stack of, of animation paper on one side of the scanner. You get your scanner. You have a big empty spot on the other side, and you, like, turn on some music or a TV show, and you just disappear for a year. <laughs> your brain shuts down. I mean, it's kind of nice, but in a really bad sort of way. <laughs> Um, so you said that you started working at Puny and like, what kind of a, like, what was your, so you, and you learned Flash on the job, right? Yeah. I had like, uh, I had assembled a traditionally animated scanned, uh, animation in Flash once because I didn't know how to use the program and I heard you could build animation in it. So (laughs) I used it incorrectly once. Uh, but that was my only experience before getting a job at a flash animation studio. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, uh, I feel like, I don't know. I've only, I've only known your, well, no, that's wrong. I was going to say, I've only known your digital animations, but that's wrong. Cause you, you have always kind of like animated a bunch in your sketchbook and then like took pictures and kind of like, like made them little gifts. Yeah. Um, like, do have you, were you more like have you ever used symbols in Flash? I feel like you're more of like a oh yeah, a, I love I like I feel like we're missing the the maybe a decade of my life where I exclusively animated in Flash and loved it. <laughs> oh yeah, really? <laughs> I yeah, I love Flash. I'm so like I learned it for that job and it uh, it learned me and now I can never escape. <laughs> It knows my name. It has it written down on a cursed piece of paper in some <laughs> corner of hell somewhere. Uh, <laughs> it, it'll never let me go, even after I die. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, because I feel like you you have a lot of credits as an animator, and I think it's kind of rare in in like in animation, in, in animation, <laughs> yeah, in TV animation, right? Because I feel like now most of the jobs true. are like. You know, uh, storyboarding, character designing, uh, like pre-production, I guess, was technically like mm-hmm. pre-production. How did you? What was your first gig in the industry? <laughs> the industry. <laughs> uh, so I mean, it was at Puny. That was my first real, real. Well, okay, that's not entirely true. I. So in college, we did uh, little bumper animations for Nickelodeon, uh, and it was probably unethical for them <laughs> to hire a bunch of college students for $500 an animation, um, <laughs> but uh, they did it anyways. <laughs> and so we, we animated, like, like, as a class, we, I guess, technically paid thousands of dollars <laughs> Uh, in order to make animations as uh, mainly little bumper animations for Nickelodeon. Um, and we had a, a producer from Nickelodeon and wow. everything. And it was, Whoa. it was, uh, it, it was one of those weird things where it's like, what an opportunity, you know, You'll, it'll be great exposure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it was like our entire school sort of back. We were all very excited. <laughs> and I still, if I could, could go back in time and do it again, I certainly would, and I'd be just as annoyed by <laughs> the situation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I did like those little uh, bumper animations for Nickelodeon in school, and then shortly after that, I went to this uh, completely traditional animation studio uh, called oh, what was it? what was their name? Real Works, I think, in in Minneapolis, and did uh, some on paper traditional animation professionally and that was the only time that's ever happened um uh for the postal service oh really the band yeah the, <laughs> the band wouldn't that be wouldn't that be cool <laughs> that would be crazy but you know what's even cooler than the postal service the band the postal service the, the postal service the real one yeah. <laughs> cuz everybody likes getting mail that's true that's true unless it's bills <laughs> Nobody likes that. No. <laughs> I did my taxes today. Oh, man, I'm I'm going to finish them tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we can take 5 minutes to just cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been like I've been like 
uh, postponing it because um, it's the first year that I'm declaring like my small business, and I'm like, no, oh, no. but it, it's okay. so much more complicated. Exactly, <laughs> there's like a whole new form, and I'm like, no, I don't want to. You'll be all right. <laughs> were you? <laughs> wait, did you ever? Were you ever freelance, Victor? Uh, I have been off and on. I did a little bit of freelance work at the beginning of this year. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I prefer the, the employment yeah. <laughs> option <laughs> so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Cause you have to do like a whole other set of like documents and stuff, right. When you're freelance. Yeah. It's just a little bit more complicated. And I think technically they, uh, uh, the percentage is a little higher if you're freelance. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. So nice just having one W two, and then you're right. Yes. <laughs> just give me it. All I want in life is one W two. <laughs> I don't want any other assets. I just want a W two. <laughs> just a little info part, little PSA for people listening. If you do freelance for Nickelodeon, they will give you a W two because they have a little like. Oh. System set up. That's pretty darn cool that you don't have to do your taxes any other way. It's just another W two. So, uh, well, the last time I worked for Nickelodeon was through Puny, so I have never actually experienced the great honor of being directly hired by them. Um, so uh, uh, soon, <laughs> so, soon. Hey, uh, Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon, so W twos. If you're listening, just send us a W. <laughs> That's like the a thing as I was I was uh bumbling through taxes today. I was like, if I just pay taxes for something, does the government then owe me what I would have earned? If I just say I'm gonna pay taxes for a job I didn't do, then the government will just give you the rest of it, right? Oh my gosh, this is breaking my brain. <laughs> please? <laughs> if I say please, um, if you're listening, we're not tax professionals. Um, please don't. <laughs> These don't take but any of your taxes advice listening. from this podcast. And this is where we could cue our sponsorship from H and R Blah. We're uh, working on it. <laughs> we don't have the sponsorship don't do yet. It. Um, but don't I feel like, do it. Like I guess when I was asking you about like your first gig, like kind of like in the industry, I guess it's maybe or maybe like maybe in LA. Like when did you? Because I feel like puny. What would oh, you say? A real what, was, job. what was kind of like their? Like they did so you did ads with them. You did websites. Did they also were they like an ad studio? Or were they just doing like a bunch of like little different? Uh, they were uh, like anything. A okay. Anything goes kind of a situation. I think yeah we did. Uh, pilot for uh, the Aquabat Super Show uh, before they got their their green light. Um, we did a whole bunch of animation for Yo Gabba Gabba, which was very fun. All the like, l all the animated stuff that goes over the live action characters um, in that show. Wait, did I say live action over animated characters? Yes. Well, the other way around. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah so we we animated like like little bats flying around broby and stuff like that um but uh uh besides that we did some work with james gunn on uh super and then later that movie 43 thing that alas nobody watched but that's okay <laughs> we still have super <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah, yeah i don't know we did we did like Li like literally like there was one project we we animated uh like little little info blips that would pop up on computer screens to say how much uh ram and and processor power they had that would show up on every computer on sale at best buy and like it was on like i went i flew to florida and uh saw my animation at, at like a best buy in florida and it was like is this is this what fame <laughs> feels like am i Your truly a celebrity taste. yeah <laughs> it's, like, it's like ah oh, yes these little yellow blocks floating around saying i can compute lots i uh yeah i don't know we literally did like every kind of project imaginable so i don't know that was 
it was kind of uh, it was fun to to like get a little taste of every little thing in the universe yeah that's really fun i like that you've like worked on a on another um, like that you didn't like land an la job right away because i feel like that's like pretty relatable for a lot of people and also like i mean i feel like when i started my career i didn't like start in la right away i like i mean yeah. I, I worked in france for a while but when i did move to la i did feel kind of like all the experience i had in france was kinda, like it was it's it feels like it's like a, a different it's like considered like differently and i feel yeah. like i wonder if you kind of had that feeling too with like all the work that you did before moving to la was kind of considered like oh yeah that's like that's like something else kind of a thing like when you're talking to like production or like um interviewing i guess for positions it's very different yeah mm -hmm. i i feel like while i was at the smaller studio it was sort of like i i was under this big uh kind of blanket you know like i i would just do whatever thing landed in front of me whatever mm -hmm. weird job landed in <laughs> front of me and then like getting on an actual show um or like working with the studios directly felt a little bit more like uh uh i don't know um what's the word i'm looking for like uh, uh, uh cur curated i don't know something oh like yeah that. yeah 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 totally it's yeah like a little like every focused. every experience was yeah it was more focused like a little uh it was it was nice to go from just like i don't know what my job is to like i draw pickles <laughs> yeah. peanuts and know, so pico like, peanuts was was your first your first la gig right uh yeah. so i moved i moved out here in 2012 mm -hmm. and uh was still working with puny they were trying to get into a whole bunch of tv stuff they were they were like getting us to go and like pitch uh stuff to to the studios around and uh i I directed a short for uh, Nickelodeon over there called By Request Pizza, which was really fun. Um, and uh, then started doing some freelance for Cartoon Network, like uh, just like, you know, designs for random shows and things like that. And that's when I sort of started getting the idea that maybe I should just pitch my stuff. I went to to Cartoon Network and showed them uh, an idea for a little kid who shoves videotapes in his head to <laughs> learn fight moves <laughs> and uh, they were like that's weird let's make something <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and so that was like that was sort of like the first time where I was like not just under this like not just like I don't know hold up in a weird cave where they'd throw beans at me every <laughs> once in a while and then I, I was I was out there hunting for beans myself <laughs> Um, no, it's really I cool don't... to hear that you were like, like Puny did kind of like tell you like, oh, direct this pilot. And like you were kind of like in that pitching environment through Puny, right? Like, did you pitch? For yeah. Them? Yeah. Cause I yeah, they were, they were very like, they they were trying to make a lot of different, like they had the mentality that like, I don't know, a a young creative professional would have if they just moved to LA, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, it was like, what do we do? There's so many options. Like maybe I could uh, do a cartoon. Maybe I could do a movie. Maybe I could, <laughs> I don't know, do more banner ads for general Mills. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I just think it's interesting. Banner though. ads for general Mills are fine. Though, just in case anybody's, <laughs> if anybody's doing that. Um, I, I like, to say that I like how you said that like you started pitching through puny because I do feel like pitching is like a very specific skill and I want to kind of hear your take on how you approach pitching like how do you uh what kind of a document do you put together to like go out and pitch or like how what's your philosophy on like pitching an idea you know i would say it's you know everybody's different everybody has their own process that works for them uh for me i am extremely drawing focused i love drawing i like solving problems with drawings i feel like that's that's what connects with me when i'm looking at things and hearing about things like 
honestly, like every, like it kind of works both ways, but like if you have like a good words to picture ratio, like you've got my attention and I'll never forget that information. So mm. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, I want so many drawings. I think, uh, for, for Thundercats, it was like, um, that was probably like the lightest pitch I ever put together. And that, that little document was maybe, just like oh man i can't remember like 20 to 30 pages not not that bad it was pretty manageable mm. um when we pitched aquaman i think we had 120 oh wow or something like that but we pitched the whole story oh, uh, oh i see and it was, yeah it was like three 44 minute episodes so it was like a lot do you think that's also because it was like an established beloved property that you have to be extra careful with it well i would maybe be inclined to think so if not for the fact that with driftwood um rest in peace uh mm -hmm. with <laughs> with driftwood i i did like 100, 160 or something like Whoa. that wow. and it was like literally the whole the whole movie like pitched out in thumbnails um and we went through the entire thing so you so basically it had the whole movie big. like boarded or thumbnailed out well it was it was thumbnailed yeah it was like it was very nice polished thumbnails most of them were like grayscale some of them were in color mm -hmm. um but yeah like it's that is the the biggest pitch deck i've i've ever built and i love it i just like hold it in my hands every once in a while just to remember Aww. those days those beautiful days that's so crazy when i think about like how much work that goes into like pitching and developing because i feel like you know like just the full movie that sounds like but i feel like that's how movies work though like from what i'm kind of like hearing a little bit it's like you really need to like have a strong vision of what the full thing is gonna feel like so it does sound like a crazy amount of work and it is uh yeah. but it's it's so interesting comparing like but and and also comparing it to how did you pitch um is it the name was get him tommy but, yeah get him tommy um uh although it was pitched as uh the greatest fighter <laughs> and then they were like nobody's gonna be able to search that because you know the internet doesn't work that way and i'm like i don't care <laughs> they're like well we're changing the name anyway so okay. they changed it to to get him tommy and uh people still don't know how to search for it because they don't know what that is uh but <laughs> it's like uh I think that pitch doc, uh, I mean, honestly, that was like a totally different animal because it wasn't really a show show. They came, they like, de they created a new department just for that where we were, we, we built like an internal, uh, flash animation studio. So there were like six animators an animation director and, um, you know, like a dedicated producer. Wow. And it was like me, me and Kyle Carroza, who mm. did uh, Mighty Magisaurs, were kind of like working in the same uh, unit for mm -hmm. a while, making like a whole bunch of shorts. I think we did like 30. Wait. Oh, man, I can't remember. It was like 30 10 second shorts. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah, it was it was a lot. It was like 30 10 second shorts, uh, three, wait, six three minute shorts? I can't remember. Anyways, what? so many, so much content. Where, do, where um, is it? Where, is it anywhere? <laughs> is, it just, think, is it just locked away in a safe? Uh, well, yeah, officially, yes. I think somebody's like put it up on the internet somewhere. If you if you look up Get Him Tommy, I think you find something. I I, I know Get Him right Tommy now. is on there, but I'm thinking about all the other stuff you're talking about. Oh, all those. Well, it's it was just all content from Get Him Tommy and Mighty Magiswords. Oh, so. okay. Oh, so all of yeah. this was all related to. That's so crazy. Okay. Oh wow. And it was just like you two guys. How did you guys like? How did you guys even like end up in that little secret development cell? Oh, uh, on accident, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like nobody really knows how any of this stuff. Like it's all 
like right place, right time, uh, fun idea, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, you can't you can't ask for these opportunities to manifest themselves. Like I came in when they were thinking about making new content for this new app called CN anything Mm. at Cartoon Network. Um, They were like, we're just going to do a whole bunch of short content. Um, We need to make some new stuff to put on there. It's also just going to be clips from shows and things like that. So uh, we were just two of the new things that were being developed specifically for this new app. And yeah, I kind of think it was just kind of right place, right time. That's crazy. It's kind of like, and that was before TikTok. That's crazy that they were already kind of thinking kind of like TikTok. Yeah. When was TikTok? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. It probably wasn't like that was 2014, I think is when we were making that. Did the CN Anything app ever come to be or no? It did. And uh, yeah, it did. And one of my favorite moments in animation history was when the app came out and our stuff wasn't on it. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, Classy. honestly, though, here's what I'm gonna say. I feel like if you're if you're gonna be, like, if you're gonna want to pitch, if you're gonna want to make stuff, like, I like that you're talking about all that content that's being made and doesn't see the light of day because I think that's very realistic about what it is to be in this industry. There's like a lot of time, there's a ton of work that's being made and it doesn't reach the outside. And I think it's like knowing that this, it's how it works and a lot of people go through it. I don't know. It's, it feels a little bit like, I don't know, better to know that like, okay, if that happens to you, listener if ever you pitch a show and it gets through a couple of steps and then it never comes out it's kind of how it is right um yeah i feel like especially now it's like you could even make a whole show and they just don't put it in anywhere so like it's it happens and you just have to it's true keep, make cool, yeah. keep making cool stuff because you love it it happens <laughs> i can i kind of feel like you know you like this is you shouldn't you shouldn't like necessarily be okay with it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's always it it should like if you put that much energy into something and they destroy it or they take it from <laughs> you somehow like my baby driftwood <laughs> oh like honestly like like that that stung the most just like losing that because of so much work put in not just by me but by like an entire team of people multiple writers just like like there are so many hopes and and dreams dumped into that show Mm -hmm. and 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 now it's just gone like you should like the the cautionary tale is like don't put all your eggs in one basket but i say screw that put all your eggs in one basket if they all drop and they all break like that sucks and it should hurt Mm -hmm. but like you're never gonna make as good of a thing if you don't you know like you yeah like you should put your entire heart into something knowing that it could be destroyed. Yeah. Mourn for it if it is destroyed. Um but know that like you're making the best thing you could possibly make. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know if that applies to everything but you know it's definitely like I don't know. It's more fun knowing that you did everything you could to make something. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the, it the best it could be. It does show any way when you pitch, right? Like, like because, okay, so you have this idea, you put a pitch together, and when you go out and you pitch it to an exec, you're in a room and you're in the process of pitching, like, I think people respond to your, like, enthusiasm, right? Like, that's kind of part of the... Big time. Yeah, I mean, like, I would, I would say that's, like, half of what they're looking for. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're looking for a cool idea that sparks their their imaginations, but then they're also looking for somebody who's just like there for it, you know? Mm-hmm. And and that's true whether it's your idea or whether it's a reboot mm-hmm. or a remake, I don't know. Those are probably the same thing, but I I want to know how you how different it was for you pitching get him tommy and pitching thundercats for because you just mentioned that like an original versus a reboot so you, you pitched an original and then a reboot um 
could you kind of like talk about how different the process for each of this thing is like how did you yeah. approach so i mean i don't know it's really difficult to know what to say about pitching because a lot of it is just different based on like who you're pitching to mm. what the state of the industry is what your experience is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like for for get them tommy the reason why why it went through is because it just fit into what they were looking for specifically it was like i i did flash shorts it was like a flash uh, a flash uh you know, I, I drew I drew everything in Flash already, so it was like it's gonna fit right into their new pipeline they're building. So it was like mm. the the perfect thing to put into this category mm. already. Um, so I didn't have to. It, it wasn't a a super dense pitch. I think I did maybe that one was maybe like six pages or something like that. It wasn't very dense, and 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 to get that conversation started and to like uh you know get them excited about the project it was literally just a drawing mm -hmm. like i literally drew the character jamming a vhs tape into his head and shared that with uh one of the execs and uh they were like oh boy this sounds like a lot of fun tell me what else you mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. uh so then i did like yeah the six page uh pitch doc mm -hmm. and oh man there was some other thing i think I think, oh man, no, I I think it was just that six page doc. I don't think I did any boards or anything. They were just like, yeah, you want to come in and do a bunch of shorts, <laughs> and it was it was like, it, yeah, it's not, it was it was not the ideal situation for getting your show greenlit, but it was something, and I had never done that before. And then mm -hmm. I got to do like work on every sort of part of the process, mm -hmm. uh, like work with like like you know casting and recording and and mixing and editing and all these fun things that i hadn't really experienced before mm -hmm. um so i i don't know it's uh that was a really unique experience that i can't like i don't think it exists you know mm -hmm. I just uh, like Thundercats hear... was a little bit more normal, but yeah. Yeah, I just like, to, but I just, I think it's really interesting to hear about all the different experiences, like not so much to replicate them, but for people to kind of like have an idea what the process feels like. Like, I like that what your thought was like, oh, I'm coming up with this fun idea. I'm going to draw a drawing and just send it to the exact who I know is kind of involved with that. Like, I think, you know, just like that, like, spontaneity i guess of like just being yeah. like i have an idea i'm gonna do this and show it i think that's really like awesome to hear because it's like you know what's the worst that could happen it could just be like yeah that's a funny drawing thank you, <laughs> you know? yeah yeah honestly like that's the, i would say that's the best advice is like do a lot of drawings get people excited about what you're bringing to the table mm. like literally i yeah I, I don't think that would have worked with it worked if I if I trace back every single project that I've worked on uh that I've that I've actually produced, um, it all started with at least a drawing, you know? Mm. It was like uh I think on on Get 'em Tommy it was just a a shot of that kid jamming a videotape into his head. On Thundercats it was just a group shot of all the Thundercats all being stupid looking <laughs> is great. <laughs> uh, and then on Aquaman, I think, yeah, Sam Register asked me to draw Aquaman. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I drew Aquaman. <laughs> uh, like, literally, like, you know, these aren't the things that got the shows made. Yeah. But these are the things that got them interested. And, like, that's the, that's the thing. You want to, like, get people excited with, like, with the, do the littlest amount of work possible to get the most amount of excitement. I I think that's great. Yeah, cuz I feel like that's something that's like kind of a little bit mysterious. I feel like right now the narrative online is like you got to come in with like a full pitch with like a million pages like right off the bat and it's kind of like I don't know. I feel like what like the narrative we're missing online a little bit is like you got to like kind of ramp up to that spot right like you can't i don't know i feel like 
I don't feel like you can send an email to like a development exec with like, oh, hello, here's my pitch of 200 pages. Like, I don't know. You know, from you, from you the- can't. That's like a really good point. <laughs> you really can't. You can't start with that. No, I mean, like, honestly, then you're, you might as well just make a book, you know, <laughs> like, pub- like self publish a book, you know, if you're going to draw that much, mm-hmm. um, just like you know on a whim yeah i suppose i i suppose you should probably just self publish a book and that sounds great yeah i hope you do that um as, you like are. running a show what would you say your like normal day was like like a day to day day to day show oh man when you're like in it it's like just wall to wall stuff like and I, I don't know if this applies to every production but it was just meetings uh, every hour of the workday uh you just roll from one into another and from that one to another it was it was just nonstop meetings whether it's like reviews or um edits or you know mm-hmm records or whatever it was it just like you're they fill your day with like every possible thing they can imagine <laughs> it's great that's <laughs> also funny because i remember on thundercats the times well i would see you at two different occasions one occasion was like during the pitch the storyboard pitches because you know that was my job <laughs> and you had to be there and then <laughs> and then the other times i would see you would be very late <laughs> after hours and you were like always working on a million things uh because there was something that's like that's really interesting about the way you work is that like you really like put your touch in like all of the episodes there's always like a little bit in an episode where there's like you did a little animation or something like a little a little flare a little thing yeah um, yeah we we kind of built it that way like i had um because every single day was filled with something uh every week uh when we were like in full swing on pro- on production um i would have my edit on thursdays mm-hmm. So it was like, I mean, it was we had three teams, right? So uh, it was like three weeks in a row I would have a Thursday night edit. And it was basically like, this is your, like at the end of the day, here is the file. Like you've done all of your meetings. It's seven o'clock or whatever, whenever the day ended back in the olden days when we were in real offices. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like 7 p.m. Here's all the files from all the board artists um do whatever you want (laughs) we'll see you in the morning (laughs) and it was like the best time ever because it was like i get to uh hang out with all this amazing work that that you guys had done like the amazing board artists just kicking butt on all this thing and it was like like uh after our rough yeah i forget exactly where it was but it was it, it had already been like yeah, all the timing was there like all the scratch was in there um so it was basically just me going in and being like where do i want to plus it like where do i want to uh where do i feel like it could be stupider uh <laughs> that that kind of thing and i got to spend an entire evening just like i don't know in enjoying the work that had been done and enhancing and uh- then the next day, I think, yeah, we had our we had uh, pitches and and stuff like that, and I was always like super zapped and super tired. But like everybody's work was so amazing, I was just having a great time. It was like wake up super tired in the morning after like, you know, working until like four a.m. <laughs> and then just like seeing more cool shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Seriously, the best. Um, Because you would do, like, scratch, too, during your edit, right? You would scratch over everything, Uh, and sometimes you would have music, right? I don't think that was the scratch I think I sent to our editor, Kyle Stafford. Um, And he would build the rough build, I think. And then our directors would do their uh, edit pass. Oh, my goodness. It's like, I mean, it's been long enough now that, I don't remember every single step, but basically I think at that point, um, 
at the point that I got my pass version, it had my scratch in it, and it was it was rough timed, and then uh, the directors had done their timing passes, so it was mostly just like enhancing. Yeah. Which was great. Yeah, cause I yeah, cause I remember cause cause I remember you did like all the scratch and it was like it was really good too. I was like, <laughs> cause you could do like different voices, like I don't know. Oh, personally, I'm I literally like I I'm just like I just started working on a short for Clark Network recently. I had to do scratch. I can only do two voices. <laughs> I had five characters to voice. There was only two different voices <laughs> for scratch. <laughs> But you could do like all of them. They all sounded different. What are the I don't two know. voices? Uh, one of them is just my regular voice, and the other one was like, "Hey, hello." <laughs> <laughs> um, can you give a name to that voice? If you had to name that voice, <laughs> what would it be? Uh, let me think. Roderick. <laughs> Rod. Roderick. Hello. <laughs> uh, hello. I like that voice. That's good. <laughs> Uh, I love, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm, you know, I'm not a voice actor, but I like doing, I like, I like pretending I am one. So doing scratch is the best way to pretend. <laughs> How many voices can you do, Megan? <laughs> I can do um, my voice and then I can do a guy voice. That's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. I th- honestly, I thought that was a guy. <laughs> you fooled me. Who is he, Megan? Who is this guy? <laughs> to do in your house that's roderick too let this fourth <laughs> wheel in here <laughs> roderick too oh my god so roderick is very talented. <laughs> roderick is a voice actor um was there any difference between i guess working on like something like thundercats or aquaman compared to like day-to-day driftwood which was an original does was there like a big difference was there like more writing days or uh, yeah, I I kind of feel like comparing you know Thundercats to Driftwood is pretty like there are so many different things that make it different mm-hmm. like the fact that we were at Cartoon Network versus Warner Brothers like they had their own you know production style um so that changed things uh and and then because it was a movie like we came in with a script that changed things. Um, there's like not a, I don't, I, I'm trying to think if there's like a, a useful way to compare them because mm-hmm. they're so, they're so different. Um, yeah, but also the format, cause Thundercast was a TV show and Driftwood was, yeah. a, oh, yeah. um, it was a movie, Doing but it. I like comparing kind of like, how would you compare kind of like the, the flow, like. I would say that like imagine you're doing so so I I I loved working on ThunderCats. There I have like, you know, zero complaints about that whole process creatively uh you know, technically like I just had so much fun. Um so maybe I don't know. I I really like that format, you know. Mm-hmm. It, but like imagine doing an entire season of a show but you have to think about every aspect of it all at once oh. so it's like it's it's like take all the energy all the creative energy that goes into like each 11 minute episode which is you know spaced out uh evenly across the entire season uh and then just like loading it into a cannon and firing <laughs> it into your face at all at the same time it's like like that's that's the difference i would say and like yeah i don't i don't know it's like I can I can see I didn't get to see the whole process because we didn't make it through the whole process but I did um like I I feel like I was beginning to get a perspective of it and I don't know I like I like TV I like 11 minutes it's nice it's like it it gave a, like it gave us a little bit more freedom to just kind of screw around and be experimental and Mm -hmm. i don't know there were there were like the pressure wasn't super high Mm -hmm. on on that sort of process basically and i i like that i think you you add pressure to art and it becomes 
torture. <laughs> Let's kind of roll it back to how you were talking about how you had to, like when you were doing a show, you could just do like little bites of the story and just, you could like write an episode and do the episode and like think about another episode. And like, eventually things would like, be like strung together and make a full thing but that uh with the movie you had to have everything figured out um and you had a script and you had to like i guess there was a little bit of like you had to write the first draft and then go back in and make sure things were set up properly for the payoff later and all that jazz right something uh yeah like i I don't know and i like every every show is different every movie i imagine is different um so you know my experience on driftwood is forever marred by where it ended up but you know mm-hmm. it's like i i kind of i i feel like yeah if you're thinking about like the difference between working on a series versus work, working on a movie it's like yeah you take you take all of the you know creative power of an entire series and load it up into a cannon and yeah fire it into your face <laughs> all at once and like that's that's the i don't know good and bad about it it's like so much more time dedicated to one big thing mm. um and yeah i don't i don't know there <laughs> this is like not it's not like a it's not a bad thing. It's just a different thing. I, I like working on a lot of different things. I, I think I'm just like excited about so many different things. So I like working on Thundercats. We got to tell so many different types of stories. We got to go to all these different places. Um, I don't, and that format is just like creatively satisfying. I, I feel like I, after making driftwood if we had actually gotten to finish it i think i would have been you know it would have affected my perspective i would have probably looked at it and said oh my god like this was so worth it but we didn't get to that point so yeah. <laughs> like right now i'm just i'm basically like but we finished so many stories on thundercats we we did so many things and we actually got to share them with the world so it's like really difficult to compare the 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 two I don't, yeah yeah it's it's gonna be interesting too because you've worked on like the three projects that you ran there were they were all like very different formats because you because thundercast was 11s aquaman was 45s how long were you? there yeah they're basically 45s yeah. 45, that's it is so crazy when I think about it. It's a weird. Mm-hmm. It's a weird amount of time for a cartoon. Yeah. Not because it can't be done, but because who does that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, are we the only forty-four minute cartoon in creation? <laughs> um, probably. Yeah, Wings was supposed to be forty-five, <laughs> and then oh, yeah. Sorry, we it's so set you down the wrong path. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ugh. it was. I don't know. I feel like. For Wings, it kind of made sense because it was, like, adapted from a book series. So I think, like, a book series is always kind of fun to have, like, like oh, we're going to make these big, grand episodes, right? Um, to cover, like, X amount of books. Um, uh-huh. But it is it is very long. Like, a 45 is, like, this, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so much... Uh, it's yeah it's a lot it's not it's not quite a movie you can't do (laughs) all the things that you can do in a movie but you kind of have to do all the things you need to do in a movie. yeah like story-wise it's like whatever the basic elements of a feature film are you need to you need to get them in there (laughs) you don't have any room for extra stuff (laughs) yeah it's just got to be like a really really dense tightly edited feature film (laughs) Um, did you do you have like a favorite part of the process, like like writing or like doing like beat boards or like after everything's done and getting to like like on Thundercats? I remember you like animated some stuff. Or do you have anything that like stands out as your uh, favorite? I like anything where I'm drawing. So I love doing yeah beat boards. I love I love. Uh, 
storyboarding storyboarding is like that's like storyboarding i'm sure as you all know is the hardest form of drawing yeah. mm-hmm. in existence yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the most challenging <laughs> form of drawing but it's the most rewarding uh, at the same time it, it, it is extremely rewarding but that's just because you're doing like five jobs at once yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you're, you're literally like you're not just drawing you know it's mm-hmm. like you're also writing, and a lot of times you're editing. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know the other jobs that you're doing, but there's definitely you're five doing of them. layout um, as well. <laughs> yeah, lay, layout and design, lots of design. I think that's also something uh, like recently I've I've kind of told um, my agent in a meeting recently. I was like, I don't really want to storyboard right now. I want to take a storyboard <laughs> break. I will. I'll do. I don't want to take a break. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll take a break from this one. Like. I'll do yeah. any other job, but not storyboard. <laughs> After twelve years, I'm like, I'm. I need a break. Storyboarding is very hard. Um. So yeah, a storyboarding is. I love it, but I am never gonna say that it's my favorite. It's I don't know. It's just we have a a weird relationship, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel um, like boarding extremely pilot. rewarding, but like yeah. boarding a pilot is fun it's so much fun um i don't know i was gonna I, I was gonna also ask you a little bit about if you can talk about that for thundercats i remember you had basically storyboarded three episodes four episodes uh four. well just two and then uh, i just two and then when we start when we were actually greenlit uh they surprised us with the fact that they wanted a a uh what uh, what what do you call it an origin story episode mm. uh and they wanted it to be a big thing with like as many episodes <laughs> they were like maybe it's six episodes <laughs> and they're like uh, can we just not do that like like w- <laughs> the plan was never to do the origin story because it's not that complex mm-hmm. Like we had originally pitched that the entire origin story was just gonna be like in the intro, mm-hmm. like almost Gilligan's Island esque. Mm. Um, and then they were like, "We don't need to do the origin story," so we were like, "Okay, we'll we'll just not worry about that." And then they were like, "Never mind, we're gonna do the origin story." <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like freaking like surprise attack where we had to throw together this origin story thing right at the beginning of the season like right as everybody was onboarding and i think um yeah megan you were you were there like you worked on i think i i did the rough boards for it in two weeks and and that's right you and you and katie and george had to jump on that and like i was like your your first episode was basically like fix my mistakes <laughs> what have i done um, that's crazy uh, though like you boarded basically like with 22 and like how many weeks two weeks three weeks it was 20 it was yeah it was two weeks but it was you know what? like megan can oh. megan can tell you it wasn't done yet it was still great i don't know <laughs> It oh, was thank, still, you, thank you. It was still. It was really fun to work. With. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, because I think it's also like I think it's interesting to talk about because I feel like so. I just like talking about the development process because I feel like we don't have a lot of content out there where people kind of go in depth about like all the different steps in development, right? Like, because yeah. there's the pitch, but after the pitch, it's not done. You're still in development, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and how how did it happen that you did you boarded two episodes? Uh, oh, so so yeah, the 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 pilot episodes, the 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 double that we were just talking about, that was different. That was like after we got greenlit, mm-hmm. they were like, "Oh, we need a backstory, <laughs> <laughs> like, last minute, throw that together real quick." That doesn't screw you up, does it? And definitely did, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, but, uh, for actual development, uh, they, they, I did, I did a drawing, like I said, I did a drawing and I was like, here's my Thundercats. And they were like, oh, that's cool. Uh, draw some more. Like, what do you think about the bad guys? What do you think about these other characters? What do you think about the general, like, what would the, the episodes look like? 
And so I did like my, my little tiny pitch doc. I think it was like only six pages at that point. And they were like, Oh, that's cool. Uh, you want to come in and board an episode? And so I came in, uh, and, uh, started working on an episode that we were going to do, uh, an animatic for, to pitch this thing to Cartoon Network. Um, and so I think I was there for about, it, it was going to be like three months where we're working on this, this board. Um, but I came on as, as a director quote unquote. Mm. And in those days, I think Warner brothers had lots of sort of weird development positions like that, where you come in, you're like working on, on your development thing, but you're also sort of available to work on other things. I worked on a bunch of teen Titans go stuff. Mm. Um, that was when they were working on the Teen Titans go to the movies movie. So I did like, uh, I boarded the, the little intro scene with their little song and, uh, the big balloon man <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning of that movie, which was really fun. Um, so, so it was like, they were just kind of throwing stuff at me, but also it was like, but still work on Thundercats. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and so, like, while doing that, I was uh, also working on on this pilot episode. And we took this episode, which uh, that one was uh, burr, 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 the episode Lost Sword, if anybody <gasps> Oh, my uh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Lost Sword. That was a lot of fun. That was the very first board that I did. And it, like, it begins, like, the style evolves through the episode. Like, at the beginning... I was drawing Tigra in this really specific way. He's like kind of got like longer features. Mm. He's a little bit more more cat like, uh, and then by the end he gets a little bit dumpier, <laughs> and like <laughs> that's like closer to where we ended mm -hmm. up like on the actual show. Mm. Um, but yeah, like the characters kind of evolved. Like Lionel was like super cat like at the beginning of the episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it was like literally that episode, that episode was me figuring out what that show was going to be. Uh, we took that to Cartoon Network and they were like, well, you, you showed us a lot of classic Thundercats lore, but like, what if people don't know what that is? <laughs> we're like, well then why are they watching Thundercats? <laughs> They're like, why don't you do another episode where there's none of that? <laughs> so we did. Oh yeah, what what episode was it? Boggy Ben. Uh, yeah, Boggy oh, Ben. So yeah. we did we did Boggy Ben and and Boggy. Why do you remember that more than me? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think for me, I remember. Okay, a little backstory for people who haven't listened to episode two of Creative Law. I think I I, I think I talked a little bit about how I landed the gig on Thundercats, or but it was at a time in my life when I saw a visa. It was very crazy because I went through this thing at Christian Network where they like go on hiatus. And when you go on hiatus, sometimes they'll hire you back and sometimes they won't. Uh, <laughs> so I was just like, uh oh, I think I need to find something because if I don't have a job lined up in 60 days, I need to leave the country. And I was just like asking everybody for like, do you know if there's a job available? I like took so many tests that like was a no. And then I remember taking a test from, I think the Owl House and I worked really hard on it. But then I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm the right fit for this show. And then I took the test for Thundercats for it. And I was like, uh, oh, I love this show. I love this show so much. I really hope I get to work on this. And I was so happy because you guys got back to me really fast. And I don't know so why I'm good. talking <laughs> about this whole thing, but I think like like very soon after that, I don't know. I remember seeing Boggy Ben very soon after that. I think or like because I remember I was looking at a lot of your stuff, Victor, online. And I was like, oh, this guy's so good. How can I try to like show that I can be as good as? <laughs> I was like looking at your big one peanut like gifts on your Tumblr and I was like, oh, I gotta do something that looks a little bit like that. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, I did not do anything that looked a little bit like that because uh, <laughs> I just tried to emulate the tone, but I couldn't, I couldn't animate that well. Uh, uh, you did you and it was amazing. Yeah, what the heck, me? And, <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, we just like loved it immediately. And I think like so, yeah. soon after, <laughs> like when we were like, oh, you guys are going to start or whatever. I remember seeing Buggy Ben 
I don't know. And I remember being so excited and I showed it to like all of all. I didn't share it online, but I shared it with all of my friends in real life. And I was like, look at- You can share it online. <laughs> <laughs> Not at the time. It was super <laughs> ending. And I was like, sure. look at this thing. I think I watched Boggy Ben like, I don't know, at least 20 times. Oh, like, it's so funny. It's so good. Um, Thank you. So that's why I remember yeah. it. And then I thought, wow, I can't believe this. I can't believe this man made this like full episode to sell the show. And then I saw that you did friggin' Lost Sword. I was like, how many episodes did he board all things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like honestly, it doesn't make any sense. I'm glad. Like basically, I had three months to do to do uh lost sword um while doing all this other stuff for titans which was very fun um and then another three months to do um boggy ben which was also very fun and also doing more titan stuff um and like yeah i don't know it was just great it was like a really good like if that's not a format that any other studio uses or Warner brothers doesn't anymore, like they should just do it, do it again. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like inviting somebody on board. Like you've got a cool idea, like be employed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and work on this thing. Uh, even if they're throwing other stuff at you because you know, they're just gonna, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just like a great, a great way to make you feel like good about the thing you're making. And like, not lose your mind over it because it's it doesn't feel like it it never felt like it was just about development it was like kind of like oh you like me as a as a artist mm -hmm. you you want me around working on various projects but you also like this thing that i i brought like it was a good a good situation and i don't know if that's like really a thing at this point but mm. If any studio executives are listening, <laughs> <laughs> bring it back. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, it's like it's not as I don't know. Like that's why it's so weird to talk about this stuff is because like er, like the industry is constantly changing and now more than ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like uh, you know, it's like it, there's no reason why it shouldn't be formatted like that, and there's no reason why it won't be formatted like that in the future or even mm -hmm. right now. So. I don't know. That was a it was a really good situation. It was like come in, work on this thing. You're also going to be working on other things, but you can you can uh, just know that we're excited about your idea. Mm -hmm. Um was there like a term so for that were you like under an overall or was it just like oh no, you're you're just an employee? Uh it was uh, I don't know. It's okay uh, if you don't want to say. Uh, it was it was short it was short term. No, no. It was it was like a short term kind of thing. Mm. I th I don't remember all the details of it, but I think it was literally like like one of the weird weird things was it was like come in, work on this thing for 3 months, develop it and uh you know, at that point, you know, we'll figure out if we're going to make it and you know, then we'll we'll go from there whether or not it's a show or whether or not we put you on something else or whether or not we part ways it's like i don't know it's like that's kind of like everything in the animation industry is temporary so yeah um it was that kind of a thing where it was like three months of just working on a fun project and then it turned into three more months of working on a fun project uh and then it turned into like I don't know, two years of working on <laughs> a fun project. That's that's like yeah. That that is still how the animation industry is. Yeah. So that's true. Everything is just temporary until it's longer temporary and then <laughs> maybe longer temporary. <laughs> and then you find out you're on The Simpsons. <laughs> oh man. The Simpsons But yeah, it's, it's 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 cool the simpsons what i was gonna say the simpsons um is that is that the dream is that your your goal your overarching goal victor uh, my my goal in animation is to make the simpsons <laughs> no would you ever do prime time that's already been done what would you ever pitch a prime time show uh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> do you have to knowingly pitch a primetime show? I don't know how that works. Yeah, I was wondering. I, uh, I, don't know. I never know. I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, like they want you to know if it's going to be for kids or adults, I guess. I don't know. Was there yeah. was there ever like a talk about like was Aquaman all, always pitched as a kids show? What was kind of like the demo for? Uh, well, I think the magic of HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Rip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, the magic of HBO Max, which I you know I think they had a lot of really awesome ideas and they did a really good job with a lot of stuff. Um, so I'm kind of sad to see them uh, turning into a less iconic brand. <laughs> Um, but like they, they were just, they, they wanted to make stuff that was like, not so hold into like a singular audience, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like the whole time we were on Aquaman, it was not for kids. It was not for adults. Mm. It was just like for people who wanted to see it, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) Like, I don't think we had the who's our audience conversation. Uh, and, like, there were multiple times where, like, you know, me and me and Marley, uh, the other showrunner, where we were, like, wondering if there were limits or, like, when they were going to start, like, like, we didn't know what our rating was for a really long time. You oh, know, it was like wow. that kind of stuff where yeah. it was basically just like, we'll wait for them to say no. <laughs> You know, that's really interesting. Yeah, you're yeah. kind of like playing with boundaries in that way. Yeah, and and like I think you like uh, it was it was a great experimental space to just make something like weird and and unique and uh, I don't know we we did that <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know I don't know what like where the industry is headed but I hope I hope uh, we keep experimenting with stuff like that. I do feel like there's probably a little bit of a, a lean towards like more audience specific genre focused kind of yeah. media, but mm-hmm. I like it when it's just sort of like the goal is to get as many eyeballs as possible. Yeah. Are you, um, are you still pitching? Are you like trying to like pitch new ideas? Yeah. I'm I'm working on a couple new things like I don't know some some stuff that's like you know kind of in the spirit of things that have been lost yeah. uh but like yeah I, uh definitely still trying to pitch stuff I don't know what the climate is right now but you know it's it doesn't hurt to give it a shot yeah. right yeah yeah just got to throw stuff out there and see what sticks eventually it's like it all just comes down to that right place, right time, right eyeballs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right uh, pitch doc. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I guess. Oh, man. But yeah, so I I really want to pitch stuff. I really want to like get another show going. I kind of am more excited about uh, uh you know TV stuff like short short form like. 11 minute 22 minute that kind of range where it's like you get to make more content and explore more types of storytelling yeah is there any other like genres that you're um excited about i'm excited about all genres that's my (laughs) problem (laughs) i yeah i don't know i mean like i love sci-fi i i mean like driftwood was gonna be a little bit of everything you know Mm. And like it was kind of like my, uh, yeah. I really I was just super excited about like how much of what I loved it combined, mm-hmm. and so yeah, I don't know like whether or not it's something in that direction where it's like kind of a little bit of everything or. Yeah, sci-fi, fantasy. I've been reading a lot of fantasy lately, so I'm just like, re- like my brain is kind of in that space. I like big epic stories. I like weird worlds and I don't know, crazy creatures and stuff like that. Um, but I also kind of like uh, more low-key, down-to-earth kind of storytelling too. So I don't know. Yeah so many options 
are you down to pivot to some questions from our listeners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've had like a lot of really good ones. Um, from our patron Nick. As a writer, I'm always trying to see what visual storytelling I can pull into my stories so they don't end up just being pure plot and giants. Um, and finding out Thundercats Roar was script driven was mind blowing given how imaginative its visuals were. I'm just wondering what the process was to go about that and whatever tips you have to always take full advantage of the medium even with writing. That's very observant and a great question. <laughs> yeah, I love this question. It's really good. Um, honestly, like I like boarding from outlines. I am super visually driven, uh, and a big, super important thing to me when starting Thundercats was, uh, I I want I want everything to kind of be malleable visually you know like i i kind of like i mean from from a story perspective we started uh with extremely visual like i feel like most of the ideas that that uh we brought to the table for story ideas were like around a really specific kind of visual thing that we wanted to do so i don't know it's like and uh, like starting with a super visual centric kind of idea inspires the writer and then from there i think like you know the, uh you know you guys can can uh back me up on this mm -hmm. if you if you want to <laughs> but like we really wanted like the board artists to feel free to like just kind of goof around and like like if some story element wasn't working for them like to just kind of do do their thing and and there was a lot of flexibility in the in the uh, um, storyboarding element. Mm -hmm. So even though we had scripts, it like we still wanted to like play around with like a lot of the visual spaces and things like that. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I think. I think if you're gonna do a script, <laughs> at the end of the day, like. And, and you want things to be like super visually driven. You just kind of have to like, like acknowledge the fact that some things are going to be malleable. Some things will change in the process. Like every part of the, every part of the process needs to like be given. It's like creative liberties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that and there's no, uh, what was that? I was going to say, I think that like it helps you feel valued like when it's that type of leadership, you feel valued in the work you do because you feel like you get to put a piece of yourself in it and like do what makes you excited about the script, which helps you get the work done and make better work. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Like, honestly, like for me, even if I write the script, I'm just doing it to get to the drawings. <laughs> so, so it's like, this is like, no, yeah, I don't know. Like writing is awesome, but like drawings is a different thing, you know? And like, I think sometimes when you get a script on some shows and some productions, it's like, you must follow the script to the letter mm. uh, or else. And it's sort of like, I don't, I don't know if that's, I mean, it, it's not even like a compliment to the script at that point. You know, it's like you just kind of have to acknowledge the fact that like animation is a different art form, you know, like if you can't let the drawings be the star, uh, <laughs> then I guess it should just be like live action at best or a radio drama at worst, you know? Yeah. And I love radio drama, so I don't mean that disparagingly. So, favorite radio drama victor uh well <laughs> this isn't fair because i literally just only listen to doctor who radio dramas <laughs> um but i love doctor who radio <laughs> dramas so, and listen to quite a lot of <laughs> from my but they're they're good. Um, I was going to say from our patron, Ace of Stars. Uh, Hi, watching Thundercats War has always been a blast, and the animation and boards were creative and funny. I was curious to ask, what was your major inspiration for your version of Thundercats War? 
other than original IP? And where, where does your creativity stem from? Dang. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> um, well, uh, my creativity s stems from... <laughs> I'm just going to the hardest part of the question. Uh, I, I, I like getting a reaction from people and like, I like drawing a stupid drawing and like, you know, getting, yeah, pe people, people are so easily entertained by stupid drawings as is proven uh, by the internet. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in internet says stupid drawing good. Uh, me also say so because <laughs> yes. they are. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think like uh, I drew the Thundercats. Um, it's yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I I like grew up. I I watched Thundercats when I was a kid. I loved Thundercats. I, I think. Oh, my watch is talking to me. Um, I, so I, I grew up watching Thundercats, um, later in life, I kind of rediscovered them when I was learning animation. Um, and so uh, like, as I was digging into, to the, uh, show from an animation perspective, I kind of like had this different kind of respect for the show from like the animation standpoint, like it is really beautiful animation. Like, I don't know if people know this or not but it's like the like the studio that that uh did thundercats pacific animation uh in the 80s uh they split off from the studio that uh uh did nausicaa Whoa, so they were <laughs> really? yeah so yeah so like when you watch thundercats you're you're looking at so half of the studio went to Pacific animation and the other half went to studio Ghibli, which was just founded. Yeah. So <laughs> basically when you, when you're, <laughs> yeah, when you're watching Nausicaa, you're looking at like the, the B team. Wow. <laughs> so, when you're looking at Thundercats, you're looking at the B team of, of Nausicaa. You're looking at the B, the, the Ghibli B team and they're so good. And like you look at the, like some of the backgrounds, especially like in the intro and like in the first couple episode. And it's just like you can see, you know, it's similar to like seeing how after uh, this is going to get really nerdy. But like after Mind Game, where Yuasa comes to Studio 4C and does Mind Game, like every film that they do after that is it, like it has his magic touch on it mm. you know it's like with like tech on king Cree and stuff like that it's mm -hmm. like like you can tell you also was in the room like the day before you know and, and like with uh with thundercats like you look at those those first episodes and you can tell that that uh miyazaki was in the room like the backgrounds are so juicy like the, <laughs> The uh, yeah, like the the effects animation and like some of the character moments are just like so wonderfully rich. I don't know. So yeah, like coming coming back to Thundercats from like as an animator, uh, when I'm when I'm trying to learn what my style is, I was just like inspired by that. It's not my style, but I was inspired by it, and so like. Uh, I think at one point, yeah, I was I was having a meeting and and uh, the idea of a Thundercats reboot was thrown out into the room, and I was <laughs> I was just like, I want I want that so bad. <laughs> uh, I think that the response was, uh, wow, we've got people working on it. Don't worry <gasps> about it. Uh, and I was like, I'm gonna do a drawing anyways. That's so and crazy. so I did. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So so it was like it, it was like not really even an option mm -hmm. i was just really excited about it i i loved i loved the original even in 2011 i loved that the the action version uh so i was i was there for like every iteration of thundercats and then and then the hint the whisper of a possible reboot was dropped and i was just like let me just do a drawing <laughs> please <laughs> just one drawing i swear to god I'll do this drawing and it'll hopefully 
make you smile. <laughs> so it made him smile, and um, you know, it ended up being a thing. But the the reason I did it wasn't because anybody asked me to. It was in spite of them saying it probably won't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I I did it like with all the the love and respect uh, <laughs> I could muster for the show because I just loved it so much. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just my, it's my, it's my style. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like, I think you also have like a very distinct, um, drawing style that I guess just comes from you doodling a ton, right? Like you just, you're, you like doodle all the time. Yeah. I, I like, I honestly, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like, like I, I think that it is actually like the secret the secret ingredient, right? You draw like a whole bunch mm-hmm. and eventually you just like figure out the ways in which you draw in which you like the most of your drawings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I like it when I draw like this. Mm-hmm. Or like, oh yeah, that drawing just makes me happy or whatever. It's like then then you discover slowly discover like, oh yeah, that's my style. Like I don't I don't even know what my style is. I just know when I like a drawing. And <laughs> so I draw more and more like that way. Yeah. And uh, then it becomes real. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't even know, like, that's sort of generally in the direction of <laughs> the the question, but. I think that was great. I think that's like a great way to kind of like talk about creativity and how you like get excited and like answering that question. Um, from our patient Biat Linspear, I have a question. Uh, can we ask questions for the guest hosts as well? And I said yes. Oh, damn! So... <laughs> Look out, Megan. <laughs> Megan, <laughs> Biat says, "I love your art, especially the way you draw character poses. It's so expressive and feels like it's a moving image." So do you have any tips for how to make your art feel more d- dynamic? Oh, um, hmm. I guess like it kind of goes with what Victor was just talking about. If you just, just by practicing and doing it a bunch, I think. And like, I think, I think also there's a lot of like, not copying, but if you find something you like and it's appealing to you, I think doing studies is really helpful, even if like, you just have like an art book and you find a drawing you like just like not not tracing it but you know you can like do studies of it i think that's always super helpful yeah i um, agree heck yeah i feel like uh, sometimes like... it's nice to just like turn your brain off and be like this is already a nice drawing like let me do some like practice i don't know yeah yeah, be inspired by everything you see, yeah. including art, especially art as an artist. That's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I I I I like that. Just like one one thing that like really uh, stuck with me is the idea that like you know like if you're <laughs> if you're interested in in making art, you probably know what art you like. So it's like make art you like like make art that you would want to put on your wall you know Mm -hmm. like like draw something that you feel like you would frame and put up next to your favorite illustrator and like that's a sort of a tall order but (laughs) you can get there yeah it's just like it's good to have those goals i agree i feel like when like i think what was it i think it was my agent actually uh we were just like hanging out one time and I was telling her I could never write like I mean obviously that sounds crazy but like, I was like I'm never gonna write ever like Joss Whedon he's too funny and she's like you can't say no <laughs> you have to try you have to let yourself dream and I was like oh it's true so it's the same thing with art it's like you have to allow yourself to dream that you can get there because if you don't even allow yourself to think it then you will never get there because you put like that stop to put your yeah put yourself on the same wall with them with your with your idols yeah it sounds crazy because you deserve it 
Yeah. It also gets you like drawing more. If you draw what you like and not, mm. don't draw what like you think the internet wants, just draw what you want to draw cuz that'll that'll keep you drawing. And that's what it's about. Just drawing. Yeah, I don't feel I don't know what the internet wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the internet reacts to like the most unpredictable stuff, so don't try to predict. It's so strange. Um, but Bia also has a question for you, Victor. Oh, what do you think of portfolios that have traditional illustration in them? Is that still a place? Is there still a place for that kind of artist in the industry? Asking because I snooped your stuff and I saw you do some <gasps> traditional hand-drawn animation. Uh, my answer to that is hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, get those original, those traditional drawings in there, uh, because um, you know a drawing, a drawing, a drawing. Software is just um, a tool, <laughs> so I like, yeah, I don't know if somebody can draw good on paper. I mean, I don't even know. This is there's like so many different jobs in the industry, so it's like this isn't necessarily for one thing in particular but like to have a good like sense of style and execute that in any capacity will give people the understanding that you know what you're doing yeah and like software is yeah i don't know it's a, it's a tool it's a, it's i don't know it's just a window into the creative soul so <laughs> and you learn you yes. learn the software on the job so it's <laughs> yeah exactly like how like like there isn't a single person in the animation industry who okay that's i mean i can't speak for everybody but, uh, i'm i'm just like most people who learned say storyboard pro probably learned on the job yeah. because why the hell would you learn that software yeah. if not if not for the fact that somebody was like we use this yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly and now you do too Here. yeah anybody it's yeah cuz it's also really expensive so it's not fun that. yeah draw draw with what you got <laughs> yeah yeah use it use the tools you have mm -hmm. and uh, honestly like you know like like everything else like the state of the industry right now it's like everything's changing like things are so different now like things are different now than they were a year ago than they were six months ago you know it's like i i think if you're bringing some some you know interesting visual interpretation into the world i don't know it's like that translates we have scanners yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it we'll take that beautiful traditional artwork we'll put it in the computer and even like it's funny because i remember because we've had a couple of guests on the show that worked on all these like cartoon network shows that were still like storyboarded on paper and eventually they all tr transitioned to server pro and it wasn't a big deal it was just kind of like i mean obviously there's like a little bit of like no i don't want to learn something new but then it's like okay now i know it it's fine <laughs> so yeah and then you learn to love it and it's the worst <laughs> <laughs> i animate in storyboard pro <laughs> it's a problem <laughs> I love I love drawing in Storyboard Pro. It's the same thing that, that happened with me on Flash. Like I didn't understand Flash at all when I first started drawing in it. I was like, this is so unnatural. And like that was you know, uh, like two thousand seven. You know, so it was like worse Flash. Where I'm sorry, I keep saying Flash, but I mean animate. Oh, I think mean, people will understand, I right? People will know I, that we're talking yeah. about animate, right? People. We'll hopefully know. <laughs> but I don't. I don't know. Will they? Uh, yeah. So Adobe Animate and is what I'm talking about. From our patient Katie. Oops. What's your opinion on students who make portfolios to get a job? If you saw a student with an original voice who only has comic work, versus a student whose portfolio is largely manufactured for the industry. Uh, well, I will say that a lot of the best storyboarders in the industry 
are also amazing comic artists. So <laughs> like storyboarding uh, story is super important and also isn't like it's not. Uh, I have weird feelings about animation because like I am an animator. I approach the industry from the perspective of an animator. But like I also don't think animation is th that like complex you know it's like i think anybody who can draw can animate it's uh i like i don't know i've got i've got weird feelings about animation i've got weird feelings about storyboarding uh basically if you're if you're a comic artist and you tell a good story and you make someone laugh or cry or feel any kind of emotion like holy crap do they need you yeah they need you in the industry <laughs> like that's all that's all anybody's trying to do is like make people feel something you know so if you if you can do that if you have that skill whether it's like through comics or through animation or through design or whatever if you can make people feel something like i i don't know people aren't looking for anything else so i think that's a do it. great answer because i feel like we haven't really had anyone say that say it in that way before like yeah it's all about like getting your an, your audience to react um to the drawings yeah feelings 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 are important from cash die how do you find time to develop original stories and do you still enjoy drawing and creating for yourself uh, I consider all the stories that I come up with, uh, for myself. Mm, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why the hell am I giving these ideas to anybody else? Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, um, yeah, it, the industry demands a lot of you. Um, but one of the things that one of the best thing it, things it demands of you is uh i don't know passion <laughs> <laughs> and and so like i don't like w when coming up with stories and things like that it's like it doesn't come like there isn't any story that i'm just like eh, i don't really want to tell that unless it's been given to me like you know if i'm coming up with a story it's got <laughs> I got to be excited about it. It's got to like be something that I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the same, like for myself versus for, a, yeah. Uh, it's the literally the same and I get the same satisfaction out of it. Like, I mean, the best example is like Thund Thundercats, like every single story in that show is like, uh, like it's, you know outside of a, a few uh a few that were from other sources like were like dumb dumb post uh, post-it note ideas you know it's like just like oh i want to do a story about this i want to do a story about that i want to like talk about this thing i want to go to this place you know like i don't know yeah <laughs> Just to uh, focus on the things that you're excited about and tell stories that you're pumped about. From Sir Wolseley, who are your favorite coworkers <gasps> ranked in order? <laughs> well, I would say probably uh, Brad is somewhere at the bottom. Um, and then anybody else after that. <laughs> For anybody listening, um, Sir Wolseley is Brad. So now you know the joke. Oh. I love Sir Wolseley. Sir Wolseley's at the top. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, you asked. <laughs> you did this to yourself, Brad. <laughs> um, I like to wrap up the episode with um a neat little question that is in no way related to the name of this podcast um do you ever experience creative block victor 
Um, and if you do, what does it feel like for you? And how do you get over it? Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody kind of... Uh, I guess I would um, say everybody everybody deals with that in their own way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, for me, there's like different kinds of creative block. There's like professional creative block and there's personal creative block. And like, like when I am not drawing enough for myself, I just have to like, you know, acknowledge that and like, the, there's nothing more i i think that like getting into the industry is a kind of creative block and like for me to get to the point that i'm at what i had to do to get beyond that block was essentially like i i started going to coffee shops in the morning like i wake up at like 6 a.m and go draw for three hours every single day yeah and like, oh. it, it was it was nuts it was like a little like hardcore like you know uh rocky training montage kind of drawing of, yeah uh, yeah exactly <sighs> but uh, but essentially like yeah i did i did i did that for like a year um this was after i graduated college so i was like i was sitting around minneapolis like working at that small animation studio and i just kind of felt like i don't know like what else there I can do with my art you know like I kind of felt like I was in this this little pocket and it was okay it was it was like I was working on some cool things some dumb things you know <laughs> it was a lot of variety um but then I I I just wanted to like see what else I could do so I started drawing I every single day for <laughs> uh three hours wow. um and uh I think yeah, somewhere in there. It's like it's it's you can you can never pinpoint it, but like it, somewhere in there I like sort of had an awakening where I was like, "Oh, I I get how to make a drawing I like." <laughs> you know, it's like like all of a sudden like like a certain element of my creative process was like unlocked and I was like, "I I like this. I I can now be an audience member to myself." <laughs> you know i can i can look at what i do and say ah yeah i like that <laughs> um so i think like the personal creative block uh, is overcome just by by process like just by like reminding yourself that like not every day you're not going to draw something you like every day uh, but if you sit down and you keep at it, like eventually you'll get to a point where you're you are drawing things you like and you are doing stuff that you're excited about. Um, and I think that's a different thing than like professional creative block. And I think a lot of times professional creative block comes from, you know, like your your work environment and like your coworkers and things like that. And yeah. I think, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have to like look at it and be like, is this me or is this like the people around me? Am I being supported? Uh, do I feel comfortable expressing myself in this environment? Mm -hmm. And like sometimes you don't. And and, uh, you know, that's like, uh, you know, for everybody, that's like a, for every job that's like a kind of different experience but i um, i like that you're touching on that subject because uh haha -ha, last surprise question uh, oh we had like a ton of questions on twitter but i don't think we have the time to go through all of them so everybody who took the time to write a question thank you so much and for this one uh let us know if you feel like comfortable answering but i think it's an interesting question from at dimps doodles did you feel any imposter syndrome after the online Thundercats roar backlash? How did you deal with it? How do you handle harsh feedback to your art in general? Uh, well, I would say that with something like that, you, I mean, you, you, as frustrating as it was, and it was very frustrating, I, I don't think you can take it too seriously because, you know, creatively, you know where you're at mm -hmm. um <laughs> so like when when i saw that stuff it was just kind of unfortunate it was just kind of like like oh well we have been we we are the butt of a joke mm -hmm. that <laughs> we weren't a we didn't know we were a part of 
Um, it's like out of your control and you just kind of have to like acknowledge the fact that you're still doing the thing that you're doing uh, because you love it. Uh, I, th I mean, that was like right in the middle of us making the show yeah so it was like <laughs> we, like we That's... yeah we we were making it like the first half was like yeah we're doing great and then we get that and then we still had an amazing time making the rest of the show yeah so uh, so it's like we you we believed in what we were doing we we weren't distract like you can't believe that stuff you have to like have faith in the thing that you're making um and and we did so yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. I remember I was telling you, you I remember you were like uh, worried about the announcement. I was like, it's going to go great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, like, I think I blacked out all all <laughs> time before before the announcement. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I don't know. It's really interesting. I feel like um, before a show gets announced or like any of the material gets released, you, the outside public, there was like this fear. I remember Loud House was similar i remember there was like a feeling of like oh everybody's gonna hate it like kind of it's there's i don't think there's a way to get over that anxiety of like uh oh we're making a thing and a lot of people are gonna like look at it and have opinions on it i feel like there was less anxiety about that before our show oh yeah <laughs> yeah like honestly like like when we were in development and like when we were leading up to the announcement like we had no idea like what was in store for us you know <laughs> we 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 kind of were just like i don't know we're making a cool show and like people haven't seen anything from these characters in a little bit so yeah. it'll be it'll be nice or weird or something like that not just like insane <laughs> you know? So really, I don't know. I don't that's know. So After true. that, I think it, I think it did like affect the industry a little bit. Everybody's just sort of like, "Oh, this can happen." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, it can, but should it? Probably not. Yeah, I think everybody's forgotten about it now. <laughs> I I hope so, or I hope they've forgotten about the hate, and now all that's left is love. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Because <laughs> we put so, so much too. love into the show. You I feel know. The love if you watch it. There's so much love. <laughs> There's love from between mummies and tigers. <laughs> There's love between uh, bats and panthers. Mm -hmm. There's even love between samurai and lions. So mm -hmm. I honestly, yeah, there's a lot of love in there. Got to open your heart. What a fun show. What a fun show. <laughs> yeah, it was such a fun show to work on. I agree. So fun. Let's go back. Yeah, let's go back. Season two. Season, Season two. two. <laughs> so this is a you listening, Sam? episode of Creative <laughs> Block where we rewind time. And we're actually um, back in 2018 right now. This is And we're working. We're that. all working on Thundercats again. I love that. We're like, uh, HBO Max, it's not going to pan out, guys. Let's stick to Cartoon Network. Everything's going to be great. <laughs> Ramp up for season two. <laughs> oh, man. So fun. Well, that was so fun. I'm so glad we got to do this and talk about all the like different projects you pitched and worked on all the different ways. Like, pitching can look like like development can look so different from a project to another and hearing what it was like running all these shows that was really great and um with that i think that's the end of this creative block victor Yay! thanks for being our guest and sharing your story thank you for having me <laughs> uh that's the end of this creative block victor thanks for being our guest and sharing your story and thanks to our listeners. Follow us on Twitter at CRTV Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. A uh, huge thanks to our editor, Clements, for editing this podcast, and Marco, Marco for helping us produce the show. If you love our show, then support us on Patreon. Becoming a patron gets you early access to interviews as well as bonus episodes. It helps us to pay for things like the Google Drive, the Zoom, and our amazing editor and producer. Click the link in the description of this episode. I have been your host, V. And I was Megan. Keep being creative, and we'll see you next week.
Bye. Bye. Bye.